Learning Module 1, Elastic Column Buckling and the Effective End Restraint. We'll begin by defining the geometry for the six parallel columns. We'll do this using the Geometry Define Frame option. Down at the bottom here, we'll put in five bays spaced at 10 feet or 120 inches. We'll have one story, and that story height will be 12 times 40 feet for 480 inches. We hit apply and we've got our geometry. The next thing we'll do is remove those beams. So under geometry remove element, we select each of the five beams. The list down at the bottom is now including those element numbers. And then we'll hit apply and that will remove the five beams. Then we'll go on and subdivide each one of those six columns into eight elements. To subdivide under geometry, select subdivide elements. We're going to subdivide all of the columns, so we select all, and we're going to subdivide them into eight segments. Hit apply, and we've got six columns, each being represented by eight elements. The last thing we'll do is just turn off those element and node numbers. To do this, we'll select view, labels, and then uncheck the node numbers. To remove the element numbers, we'll do the same thing. View, labels, and element numbers. OK, so now we're going to define the section and material properties. To do that, we select Properties, Define Section. Now, now down at the bottom, we could define all the values. But because we've used the standard W14 by 82 shape, we can select it from the database. So we click on Database and it brings up the AISC database of sections, and we can scroll down and find the W14 by 82 that we need. Now, when I click on W14 by 82, all the text boxes down below will be filled in with the correct values. Now, these values are not defined in the model until we hit Apply. So when I hit Apply here, the section properties of W14 by 82 have been defined as Section 1. We can now go and attach those by selecting Attach Section. And we would like all of our elements, so I'll click on All, to be the W14 by 82. And I'll hit Apply. And now all of our elements have section properties defined. We'll now define the material properties. To do this, we'll use a similar approach as to what we use for section properties. So we'll click Select Properties, Define Material. And down at the base, we'll type in Steel and 29,000. It's important to note that we've defined E in terms of kips and square inches. Earlier, we used length units of inches, and now we've defined that our force units will be kips. Mass tan can work in any units as uh, long as you use consistent units. It's also important to note that the weight density here is set to zero, which means the self weight of the members will not be included in our analysis. So from here, we can hit apply and move on. Now we'll attach those material properties to all the elements. To do that, we'll select Properties, Attach Material. We'll select All, because all the elements are going to be that material property 1 or steel. Hit Apply, and all the material and section properties have been defined. Now it's time to define the boundary conditions. We'll start with the support conditions. So we go under Conditions. Define fixities. And down at the base, you can see that there are six degrees of freedom for each node. As we click on these degrees of freedom, we restrain them. So I'm going to restrain X, Y, and Z rotation. This is the boundary condition at the base of these first three elements. I'm selecting those elements now. And this fifth element. So when I hit apply, you can see the red arrows indicating restrain. I'll clear the list now and provide pin support bases at this node and this node. Release the rotation, but keep the X and Y, Z translation fixed. Hit Apply, and those have been restrained. I'll now clear, and we'll move to the top. In the first case, what we have is Y is free to move up and down, of course, 
but X and Z rotation have been restrained. Hit apply, and that boundary condition's on. I'll hit clear, and I'll put a roller up at the top, so a roller would be no Z would be free to rotate in the Z. So we'll remove that and just have X displacement restrained. And that's the boundary condition at the top of this column and at the fourth column. We'll now clear the list one more time. And we will prevent Z rotation, but allow X and Y translation at the top of column number three and column number six here. Hit apply. And we have all of our boundary conditions, or at least our SOAP support conditions, defined. So now we'll move on and apply the loads. So under conditions, we'll define force. And what we'll basically do in this case is at the top of each one of the columns, so I'm going to select them here, is we're going to apply a downward one kip force. After we do the buckling analysis, it will provide us with an applied load ratio, which is basically a factor times this one kip which will tell us how much load it took to buckle each one of the columns. So on the PY, I'll type in here minus one, hit apply, and now a negative one kip is on the top of each one of these columns. Our pre-processing is now done, so it's time to perform the analysis. So select analysis, and of the many options available, in this case, we're just gonna be doing an elastic critical load or buckling or eigenvalue analysis. So select that. Now it's important to note that we only provided in-plane boundary conditions. So we don't want our structure to be unstable. So we won't do a space frame analysis, but a planar frame analysis. You've been asked to look at the first 10 modes. So I'm gonna click this until we hit 10 here. With that, I'll hit apply and our analysis will be completed. Okay, so now it's time to look at the results. So we go into the results menu and we select diagrams and we're going to look at the deflected shape. So select deflected shape. Down at the base of the parameters and all we need to do at this point is just hit apply. And we can see that the fifth column is the one that's buckling. Uh, let's turn up the scale factor a little bit so we can see that better. The scale factor is currently set at 10. I'm going to set it to 100 and hit apply. So you can see now that that fifth column is buckling at one kip, that's what we had on there, times an applied load ratio of 273.6, or the column buckled at 273.6 kips. We can look at other modes by simply clicking the greater than sign down here, advance to the second mode, and be sure to hit apply, and then you can see the second mode. We could advance to the third mode, and we can see the Euler column now buckling, and we can continue this on until we've looked at all 10 of the modes. This concludes the tutorial. It would probably be a good time now to uh, save the file. The only important thing there is to make sure that you don't use any spaces or any odd characters. Basically, the file name just needs to be continuous alphanumeric. Hope you found this interesting, and we'll see you at the beginning of Learning Module 2.0.